<laughs> Hello, Charles back again, and this is going to be the first segment of 101 Things You Wish You'd Invented and Some You Wish No One Had. I'm going to do numbers 1 to 5 on the 101 Things. So let's start with number 1 then. <laughs> let's open the book. Uh, so many pages at the beginning. So number one is time. Ooh, let's read the introduction. Far back in the midst of Earth time, people must have got fed up with everyone being late for everything. Someone came up with the bright idea of time and how to measure it. Second nature. The most obvious way of measuring time is, of course, the sun coming up and going down and then coming up again a day. People probably caught on to that one fairly fast, and the moon goes through phases from a sliver to a circle of about a month, which divides time into bigger chunks. The ancient Egyptians came up with the 365 day calendar. They noticed that some things happened once every 12 months, like the flooding of the River Nile. The earliest recorded year was 4236 BC. If you want to be a bit more specific, you need to divide up the day into smaller chunks. The ancient Babylonians came up 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. Ever since then, people have been inventing time measuring devices. Clocks. And we've got a picture of a watch. And I'm actually wearing a watch. Funny enough. So it says some little facts about time, of course, apart from the second nature section. Sundials were used to measure time over 5,000 years ago. Water clocks which drip water at a constant rate told the time in Egypt and Babylon around 3,500 years ago. Dutch scientist Christian Huygens invented the first mechanical pendulum clock in 1656. In the 20th century, mechanical clocks were replaced by quartz crystal clocks in which crystals vibrate at a constant rate. Atomic clocks use the resonance of atoms to measure time. The first acute one was built by Lewis Essen in 1955, but not many people need to be that precise. So then it says over on the other side of the form, at the top here, it says it's about time and it explains like how one year is equal to, ten years is equal to, etc. And then it talks about leap years and stuff. And then down here is the bit that we fill in. And the first question is, how long have you been alive? So firstly, write down your birth date. Well, that's the 26th. Third, 1994. Today's date is the 20th of the 5th, 2013. I had to look up then, I don't know why. The exact time now is 17 15, oh, and I don't know how many seconds, uh, 56. Exact time now. Oh, here we go. So now do the maths. Work out how long you've been alive. Really? <laughs> We're doing maths now. And this might take a while because I only have the little calculator that is on my computer, which I've just pulled up there. Okay, so work how long you've been alive in centuries. So one century is 100 years. And I've been alive 19 years. So it would be not point one nine, I believe. If my maths is wrong, that's because I've had a maths exam this morning and I'm a bit when it comes to maths. So work out how long you've been alive in decades. So that will be 1.9. And in years is 19 point uh, March to April, April to May. It's not quite a second month, so we'll put point one. Oh, it's got an extra digit on the form. I'm about six days off. So, so 1.8. It's a rough estimation. In months. Oh, okay, so I'm 19. So... 19 times 12 plus April and May, just say that. 230 months. That's what we'll put in weeks. So in each month we'll say that there's four weeks. So we shall times that. Oh no, wait, we've got. 
yeah, we've classed that as a full month. We've got to times that by four. That's 920 weeks. In days, so in each week we have seven days, so we'll times that by seven. I'm 6,440 days old. How strange is that? In hours. Okay, so it's 24 hours in the day, so times that by 24. Wow. That is 154,560. In minutes, so times that by 60 again. 9,273,000. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to work out how to say that then. 9273600. In seconds and counting, so we'll times that by 60 once more because we'll class. Oh, that'd be a bit weird. Um, we'll just times it by 60, make it easier on, the, on myself. And that is a very large number. That's, that's million. 556,416,000 seconds at the time that we've rest estimated, not the exact time. So, 55641. Otherwise, we'll be here all day, three seconds. And that's it. That's form number one complete. If you can see my purple hand writing, oh, one side, that side. <laughs> so, stick a star on it. Because this book has the star system as well. Ta da! Complete. That took seven minutes for the intro and <laughs> number one. Item number two, what do we have? We have a mobile phone. It's hard to imagine how people manage to run their lives before mobile phones. I'm sorry about that noise, if you can hear it. That was a housemate. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to imagine how people manage to run their lives before mobile phones. It's good to know you can get hold of your family whenever you need them, although sometimes you might wish it wasn't so easy for them to get hold of you. And then this little section is called See You Later, and it's in text to speak. I don't know if you can quite see that. There we go, see you later. You might have seen clunking 1980s mobile phones the size and weight of a house brick, but did you know mobiles have been around since 1947? The first mobile phone system was introduced in St. Louis in 1946 by US telecom companies AT&T and Southwestern Bell. And I'm just going to briefly skip all this because it's a lot of facts and a lot of information for each fact. Um, in 1947 Bell Laboratories came up with the idea for a cellular system instead of using one large transmitter each small area had its own low powered one. A cellular mobile phone network wasn't up and running for another 30 years. In the USA this delay was caused by strict regulation and radio frequencies set by the government. In 1978 Chicago had the world's first cellular mobile phone network. Good going Chicago. Europe's first cellular mobile phones were introduced in Sweden, Finland, Denmark and Norway in 1981. Britain followed in 1985. At first it was easy to eavesdrop on other people's calls in criminal to able to make calls using genuine customers' accounts. Secure networks have been around since the early 1990s. So we were a bit late on the ball in 1985. But nah, never mind. Okay, and this is the form on this side. And we have text champion is what it says and it's all in text speak and I hate text speak so I'm having to translate it in my head and it's annoying me already. How skilled are you with your mobile phone? Have a go at the free challenges below. You'll find the answers at the back of the book when you're finished. Interesting. So challenge number one and I do have my mobile phone here. Fastest fingers first. Text message competitions are held to find the fastest text messenger on the planet. The current world record holder is Ang Chong Yang from Singapore. He typed 160 characters in 41.52 seconds. How fast do you think you are? See how fast you can type the message that the Guinness Book of Records officials asked him to type. And the passage is... 
The razor tooth piranhas of the Gerina Cerasolomus, I don't know how to pronounce this, and Pygocentrus are the most ferocious freshwater fish in the world. In reality, they seldom attack a human. I don't know if you can see it on the grey box. That's the mess because I failed to say that quite clearly. So yeah, that's the message on the box. So I've got to try and beat that. Wow. Okay. This is this is going to be interesting. And as I'm recording this, you won't see that on the video, but up in the top left corner of my screen, I see my finger like up here. Um I have a recording time signature. So at the minute we've been recording 10 minutes and 40 seconds. So I'm going to be using that to try and time me. So I'll state what time it is there and then I'll do it and then I'll look up and say what time. So it's going to be a bit slower because of course I'm going to go look down, look. But yeah, no, this is, I'm, I'm just setting up text message. See, so it's blank, blank. But yeah, my, my, my little, my little phone. A little cute cheap thing <laughs> but yeah no so i'm going to try and do this and i'm going to keep looking down at the passage which is in front of me and i've got my mobile phone and then i'll stop the clock and i'll show you the passage the best i can and then we'll work out my time sounds pretty good to me so we're going to start at 11 minutes 30 which is in four seconds three two one go the razor there's my dash line. <laughs> Toothed piranhas. I don't know how to spell of the genera. Oh gosh, this is word. S E R R. Oh my gosh. R R A S A. Yes, A. Oh, that's not an A. A S A L. That's not an L. <laughs> oh, Salamus and I love how my predictor text is trying to change everything. I go sun, not Ben, sun, tuss, tuss, even, not tuss, tuss, are the most ferocious, Ooh, not two S's, fresh water, fish in the world in reality not go reality in reality they seldom attack a human a human stop the clock 13.30 so it took me two minutes I'm not going to be winning any records honestly and I shall show you my proof that I've done it. Oh, let me get to the top of the message and I'm gonna have to scroll down. But yeah, my little phone charm. Yeah, can you see that? There you go. <laughs> Did the message in two minutes. Just not too bad, I suppose, to say that it was the first ever time doing that, and that is 120 seconds. 120 seconds. We'll say round that up a little bit because it wasn't exactly uh, 13.30 when I looked up. But yeah. So text, text. What do the following abbreviations mean? Oh gosh. Please don't do this to me. So we've got K-O-T-L. And already, I don't know. I don't use text speak. And I've never seen K-O-T-L. Um, King of the Land? I don't know. You're probably all going to laugh at the weird abbreviations that I'm going to say. But I honestly don't know what it is, so 
we'll come back to that lol now there's two for this there's laugh out loud and lots of love I know that one. <laughs> S O H F. S O H F. This is why I wish that you could talk back to me and tell me it's this. And I'll be like, oh yes. That's why I'm just going to drink water. <clears throat> I don't know. And I'm going to kick myself when I see the answers. I can tell you that now. E O D. End of danger. I honestly don't know. F Y E O. I know F Y I for your information, but not E O. For your enjoyment. So that hasn't got an O in the end. I don't know. GAL. Gal? Is that some sort of biological compound? I don't know. I know Gal. <laughs> Gal. I don't know. I'm, I'm so stumped with these. I've never heard of these. Are these American or some other country's text week? Because I've never seen these. Um, KISS. K I S S. Uh, I need a kiss as in like kiss. PTB. Again, no clue. I'm just, I've got one, one so far. TL8, that's too late. Too late, too late, too late. T and a plus sign. T and a plus sign. I don't have a clue. I honestly do not have a clue. But we're not going to look at the answers until I try to complete all three challenges. And the bottom challenge is emoticons. What do the following mean? And I'm going to try and show you them. Uh, let me see. There. I hope that's a big enough. Oh. There you go. So, the top one, if you saw that correctly, I think is a rose. It looks like a rose or a flower of some sort. It's got the at sign, which I think is the power of the bud. And then it has like a V halfway down to what I think is the stem, which will be leaves, I assume. The second one, I think, is a guy wearing headphones or a girl wearing headphones. Because there's two, there's a D and a B, so sort of like headphones. And the bottom one is squinty eye. But it's not as a evil, I'm pulling faces, it's not as if evil, but as in like content, I suppose, would call it. So that's all of them. Let's look at the answers. And we have. K-O-T-L is kiss on the lips. Kiss on the lips. That's all, just kiss. Sorry, I've got this bitch nose. Lol in this instance is laughing out loud, but we knew that. S-O-H-F, sense of humour failure. I just say that's an epic fail. Sense of humour failure. Or oh, that was sad. Or oh, that was awful. I've never heard of sense of humour failure. Okay. E O D. End of discussion. Of course it's end of discussion. Of course. F Y E O. For your eyes only. That's what you put on the back of letters. Why did I not remember that? <laughs> Girl, get a life. That's what I need right now. Because this is silly. Oh, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. What is wrong with me? PTB, please text back. Please text back. Yeah. 
Too late, we got that one correct. And T plus is think positive. I think it's right, think positive. Oh, crying out loud. And so we got two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two out of ten. It's not bad for a non text user. No, a non text speak user. I write out in full sentences via text. It makes so much more sense. Um, so the emoticons, the top one was a rose. The second one was someone with headphones on. But the third one I got wrong, it's someone's crying uncontrollably. I don't know why they'd have like arrows pointing in to the face as crying because tears fall downwards, not that way on both sides, unless you've got some sort of freaky eye action going on. I don't know. But that's basically it. We'll just uh, put a sticker on that. We've done it. I'll fill out the form completely later and it's either point in you having to sit there and watch me fill out the form. Matches. Got all matches and I have a box. Uh, I don't know why I have a box for this, just in case. Oh, I do have candles, so I liked my candles with my matches. Um, matches. <clears throat> Things are falling out. Considering how many years fire has been around, the invention of the match was a long time coming. Before matches, there were various methods of lighting a fire, all of them painfully slow. The best one was a tinder box, which used steel, flint and tinder, material that would easily catch fire, such as charred cloth or flakes of wood. The tinder had to be very dry for it to work well, so it often didn't. People were desperate for something faster and more effective. Let there be light, is the name of this next section. Sticks of wood impregnated with sulfur were used in China in the 6th century. Um, Kate Chancel invented a match that used sulfur, a best and sulfuric acid. Uh, in 1826, John Walker invented a match that worked by friction. In 1845, Swedish inventor J. Lundström made striking a match a lot safer. Yeah, I'm just cutting short the long facts because there's a lot. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I hold it there, you can pause the video and read it for yourself. Let me try and angle it. Oh, there you go. Pause the video. And on the other side is the form. I'll show you the form. Have you met your match? Oh, puns! Yay! Can you solve the following puzzles without overlapping any matches or leaving any loose ends? Solve the puzzles, then baffle others with them to earn your star. Okay, so matches will come in handy. Let me, let me keep me matches out. <coughs> I don't know why we've got two puzzles, but we'll start off with the first one. There. Quickly set it up. And this may have failed massively as I'm not worn for match puzzles. I cannot do them. I want a couple more there. Right. So, this first one is this one. That's what I've got on my table in match form. It's easy to show that on my table. Can you make four complete squares by only moving three matches? Okay, so four complete squares by moving three matches. On this five. So you've got to move three matches to make four squares instead of five. I could take two matches away. Well, yeah, two matches away and I'll have it, but I assume they've all got to be a part of the part of the puzzle. Hmm. <coughs> See, my matches are over here, by the way. And this may take a while. I think 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these off camera. So, because this might take a while, this video is already long and I've not even gotten onto four or five yet. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to sh show you the puzzles one by one. And then I'm going to open up the answers with it facing this way and then show you the answers so I'm not looking at the answers. And then I will attempt them off camera and I will tell you next time whether or not I was able to do it or if I end up giving up. And I'll make a note on the page so I know whether or not I gave up <laughs> when it comes to next week. So yeah, so puzzle one is... Mm, just trying to... is that. And it's, can you make four complete squares by moving only three matches? Pause the video now, so you can do that one. This is puzzle two. Can you make two squares by removing two matches? Just the two. Puzzle three, this is this one. Can you make the fish face the other way by moving only three matches? Puzzle four is this one. Can you make three complete squares by moving only three matches? And puzzle five is this one. Ooh. Can you make four complete triangles by moving only two matches? So yeah, that's the full page. And what I assume with the way that they've done it is when it says move, you have to put the match back on the table somewhere in regards to the shape. Whereas if it says move, then you can take the match away completely. Can you see the puzzles? But yeah, no, it's complicated and I'll quickly show you the answer. Um, try and find the answer page. Uh, that's question number, oh, that's the answer pages. Uh, what's a form, that's the answer page. So, I'm not looking, my eyes are closed, there's your answers. I hope that's on screen. I'm just going to quickly glance. Yep, that's on screen. You can see the diagrams. That's what it looks like. So yeah, I'm going to try and zoom it in. There you go. I hope you were able to see that. Um, but yeah. So that's, that's the match challenge and I have my matches to try it out as soon as I finish this video and I'll let you know how that goes. And I won't put sick to it until I've tried them out. <clears throat> Number four, cloning. And look, there's loads of Dolly the sheep. Oh, it says, who are you? I'm Eve, I'm Eve too. Yay. <clears throat> cloning. It's only a matter of time before there are thousands of copies of you running about confusing everybody. Copycat. Chloe is an exact copy of another plant or animal. The genes of both organisms are identical. Dolly, the first sheep to make history, was born on 5th July 1996 at the Roslyn Institute in Scotland. Animals had been cloned before using cells from embryos, but Dolly was cloned from a selling an adult animal. Scientists at Roslyn had taken an egg from a sheep, all the genetic material out was took out and replaced with a cell from Dolly's mum. This sounds like an awful lot of trouble to go to just for a sheep. After all, there are millions of the creatures, they all look exactly the same. Anyway, the point of cloning isn't to make identical sheep, though, it's to make it easy to produce animals or plants with particular characteristics. If animals are bred in the usual way, this will take a lot longer than will cloning to produce human insulin. In the future, animals could be produced to provide human spare parts like hearts, kidneys, and livers. Another benefit of cloning might be to breed endangered animals, and an Asian ox called a gore was born to an ordinary cow in Lower, USA, as a result of cloning. Not surprisingly, cloning is the subject of heated debate, particularly ethical and moral debate, but that's a different different thing entirely. So here's the form. Can you see that? <clears throat> so this one requires using Google. And I have it up in the background. So I'm just gonna quickly play around with my screen to make sure that I can see it and see the camera to make sure that everything's fine on camera. Yeah, people outside my house shouting. <laughs> my window's open, it's quite hot. You can see that's the sun, obviously, still. Right, 
says, type your name into the following website to find out how many people with the same name as you within the country. So as I live in the UK, I'm going to be using the your not me.com with no punctuation in it and apparently it does not exist let's try the American site it gives me how many of me dot com hopefully this works I didn't test this I should have done but it gave me sites and obviously the book is quite um old in comparison yeah no there's no such thing okay we'll, we'll quickly try google and find how many people live in the uk with my name i'm going to put my real name obviously and not um chive and it's the 200th most popular girl name in the UK. Just funny because I've never met anyone with the same name as mine. Um, I can't find. Because it says the first thing you put is the number of people in the UK have the same name as me. Oh, it means God has promised, apparently. Um... We'll just go with this, which it says 176 recorded births in 2011 with the name. So we'll just put 176 in 2011. And that was just in on babynames.co.uk. That gave me that information in case you want to do that. Secondly, type your name into a search engine to see how many of your same name imposters have details about themselves on the internet. Hopefully none. My full name. One. Two. Three, four. Including a 34-year-old with my first, first name and last name that lives in Wales. So that's four. Five, a doctor at the University of Glasgow. Uh, six, that's a different Facebook to my own. Seven, that's a different Bebo from the one that I made way long ago because apparently they're 23 years old. Eight, they're in India. Athlete profile, that's number nine. <laughs> Linkedin. I don't know who that is. Oh no, that's that's wrong. That's the wrong name. So we'll go off the first page, which is nine people. So nine. From your research, did you find you have anything else in common with them? That's the same first and last name. <coughs> From what I can tell, no. If we have to list some similarities, well, we don't have any. Take a good box if you found any same name imposters that are famous I suppose it, mm, there's no such thing as famous as in like oh my gosh oh oh no I was going to say they've won an award but they're not famous so nope live nearby they all look like they're from Wales which makes oh and Scotland Glasgow which makes sense as my birth my, my actual first name is welsh descendant have a job you'd love well there's a doctor of interdisciplinary studies at a university so i'll just say yeah I'll, i'd love to work at university or in prison I don't think anyone's going to put that on their profiles and I'm not bothering to click on any of the links I'm just looking at the um, Google link and then the little bit of information below it um, have invented something um, or dead most likely we'll just, we'll just take that one have you met any of your same name imposters? no, I've never met anyone with the same name as me if yes, what are they like? I've never. 
So, doppelgangers. If you're a twin, finding your doppelganger, general word meaning a lookalike or evil twin, it's going to be very easy. If not, then your doppelganger may be extremely difficult to find. If you haven't found your doppelganger already, you may be able to find one by using this website, findmydouble.com. Another website I've never heard of. Findmydouble.com. And hopefully we'll have more, more luck with this one. But it'll be just my luck that it doesn't work. And I'm going to have to think of something off the top of my head. Um, it's taking forever to load, so I'm scared that it doesn't exist. Um, I don't even know what the website is about. Um, yep, yeah, no, it doesn't exist. Have you ever seen your double? We'll say no. If yes, where did you see them? I have a twin in the street and a photograph at school or other. We'll say no. If other, where did you see your double going? Have you ever been mistaken for someone else or been told you look exactly like my friend? No, I've been told that I sound, as in the way I talk, is like a good friend and if we met we'll be like perfect for each other, but no. Have you met any of your double gangers? Nope. Just keep putting no. If yes, how much do they look like you? Well, I've never met anyone, so that's it. That's item number four, cloning. We'll stick our uh, sticker and make it official. Oh, my sticker went a bit wonky. But there we go. Form completed. Item number five and the last one today. Food and drink. Fast food. There's plenty of food that's quick, in fact, instant, but in fact, instant bananas, for example. But most people, but most people think fast food is pre-prepared meals that are heated up as soon as you order them and whisk to you in seconds. Speedy snacker. Fast food has been around for a long time, but it took the last 100 years or so to make it really unhealthy. Modern fast food began when in 1902, ready-made meals were sold in coin operated machines in a cafe in Philadelphia and then 10 years later in New York. It doesn't sound very appetising but the food became popular in the 1920s and 30s during the Great Depression. The biggest fast food restaurant chain ever is McDonald's. It started in 1948 as a restaurant run by two brothers selling a limited menu very cheaply and quickly. They shifted so many burgers, fries and milkshakes that Ray Kroc, a milkshake mixer salesman, decided to buy the business. Kroc's clever marketing made McDonald's a huge change of restaurants we know today. And that's just brief. Got a little burger. And a little hot dog, and they're racing for the finish line. It's quite cute. And there's the form. Now, this form I won't be able to do in this video, which is good because we're already coming up to 40 minutes. But basically, it says that fast food doesn't have to be an unhealthy affair, and it gives you a recipe for a fast food meal from a burger, chips, and a smoothie. So it sounds really yummy and I'm going to have to do it at some point and what I'll do is I'll take a photo and I will like put it as a comment into this or I'll show it in another video um, but yeah I obviously can't do it on camera because I don't have a camera that will allow you to see me make something and I'm not exactly going to be filming myself in the kitchen here <laughs> I may do it when uh, no I'm not really I don't feel comfortable recording myself making food i'm not the best of chefs and i'll get scared and nervous and probably cut myself <laughs> no my look but if you want the recipe for the burger the chips and it's sweet potato chips and it looks really nice as in the recipe just looking at it now then i will happily type it out or find some way of giving it to you but yeah, the form basically says down in the corner what ingredients did you put into your smoothie because it gives you a list of ingredients that it recommends and um, yeah, it just says on the what to do section is what ingredients did you use and then that's the form completed once you've made it. So we can't really complete that today because you have not really done it. But that is item number five. Fast food. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's it pretty much for this. I'll give you a brief, brief, um, I'll just name the next five so you, 
we can have something to look forward to. So in number six is photography. Seven is time zones. Eight is nuclear weapons. Nine is money. And ten is time machine, which also is pretty, pretty epic. But yeah, no, so that's the book. It's by Richard Horn and Tracy Turner, if you're interested. And it is a part of the 100 Things to Do series. And looking in the back of this book, when I was flicking through... So let's page it back and obviously you recognise that book Ooh, as the one that I've already got. And the other book in this series is 101 Things You Need to Know and Some You Don't, which would be interesting to find. Um, and these two books came after the original book. It was published in 2008, this particular one. And these two came after the previous one. So yeah, so I hope you've found this enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed trying to see me do maths and make the internet work. And hopefully you'll fill out the forms as well. And it'll be interesting to see if you do fill out the forms yourself onto a piece of paper and then like scan it into your computer. I could try and do that. I could try and scan the recipe into my computer and give you the image of the recipe. But it'll be interesting if you scan the forms and shared them with me. I am if it's, if you're on hex on hex I'm chive underscore p. If not, through YouTube, uh, I'm sure there's a private messaging service that you can send to me or just put it as a comment on the page if you're brave enough to do so. I'll leave it comments accessible and I'll, and I'll leave um, radio responses, radio, video responses open for this particular, this particular like series. Um, and then you can video response yourself, completing it if you want. So yeah, so it's been interesting, it's been fun, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I shall see you all next time. Bye!